In section 3.3, we're going to find the measures of central tendency and dispersion for grouped data. Okay, so there's a little bit to unpack there. By central tendency, we mean the mean, right? We're talking about a type of average. And dispersion will be standard deviation, and with standard deviation goes variance because they go hand in hand. The variance is nothing but the standard deviation squared. Now I say for grouped data here, but another way you can think of that is for frequency distributions or relative frequency distributions, right? That's also a possibility, right? So that's sort of what we're talking about. Now let's look at the first type here, which is the weighted mean. It's slightly different because we generally don't think of this as a frequency distribution, but it sort of is. So when you want to find the weighted mean, it's a measure of center for a data set um, similar to an arithmetic mean, but instead of a data point contributing equally, this is the key, to find the average, some data points contribute more or less depending on their weight. In other words, some values are worth more than others. Now, this is a very important idea because this is how you find things like your GPA, your grade in a class, that kind of thing. So grade, GPA, etc. <laughs> there are a lot of weighted means out there, right? And so that, that's the weighted mean formula right here. So you take the sum of all your values times their weights. So you take value times weight, value times weight, value times weight, and you add them up, and you divide by the sum of the weights. That's the formula. All right, so suppose that Ashley took four courses last semester. She got a 4.0 in her four-credit statistics class, of course, a 3.0 in her five-credit chemistry class, a 2.5 in her two-credit fitness class, and a 3.5 in her three-credit English class. Ashley thinks that her GPA for the semester is as follows. Explain why it's incorrect to just take 4.0 plus 3.0 plus 2.5 plus 3.5 and divide it by 4 because she had four classes. Ah, so she's missing the weights. Some values are worth more than others because they're worth more credits, right? The more credit a class is, the more it's worth. So she's not taking into account, which by the way, if you did this, if you added all those up and divided by four, here, I can show you on the calculator. So remember the alpha F1 key, number one, gets us a fraction. And so then we can type four plus 3.5 plus 2.5 plus three, arrow down and divide by four, and you get 3.25. So she thinks her GPA is 3.25. She's wrong, right? Because she's not taking into account that, well, see, the chemistry class is worth five credits. So it's worth more than, um, let's see, the fitness class, for example. So we can say um, the chemistry class is worth the most at five credits. And the fitness class is worth less, right? Or worth the least, I should say. Because it's only two credits, right? And she's not taking any of that into account, right? All right, so then how would you take it into account? Now let's do this by hand once, so that way we can show how the formula works. So, and also, honestly, this formula is a nice, easy formula to use. We do it pretty frequently, just by hand. All right, don't worry about the little eyes. They, that just means index. It just means, well, I'll show you what it means. So class number one, if we look up at the paragraph. Class number one is her four credit statistics course. So weight number one, which is what the little I stands for. If you want to have the little I, you can put them in there. Weight number one is four. Weight number two is the second class, which was five. Weight number three was two, and weight number four is three. So it's just, it's just class one, class two, class three, class four. That's all the little I stands for. One, two, three, four. All right, up here at the top, Class 1, her grade is a 4.0. So you take 4.0 times 4, times its weight, then you add to it the next class. So that would be 
3.0 times 5 plus 2.5 times 2 plus 3.5 times 3. So the formula is saying multiply your value times your weight, your value times your weight, your value times your weight, and then you add them up. Simple as that. And we will do this one on occasion by hand. So it's important to actually know how to do it by hand. All right, so let me grab. Now, when I say by hand, I'm not saying we won't do the calculation part <laughs> with the calculator. So let's see, 4 times 4 plus 3 times, 3 times 5 plus 2.5 times 2 plus 3.5 times 3. I could use parentheses. I just chose not to. I chose to use the time symbol. Either way, right? And I get that the numerator is 46.5. All right, so that means that this top right here is 46.5. Then we'll divide it by the denominator, which I don't need a calculator to do. And that's 9 plus 5, that's 14. So she was enrolled in 14 credit hours that semester, which that I will grab a calculator to do. Divide, 14, enter. 3.32. So that is her GPA. Now, how do we get it from StatCrunch and the calculator? As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you StatCrunch as well. Because StatCrunch will also do this. All right, so calculator first, I guess. So Stat, Edit. I want to clear out this old data here. So I'm going to press Clear. So I went up. To L1 and pressed clear enter and that clears it out and then I tell it the grades so I'm going to put the grades in this column so 4 3 2.5 and 3.5 and then I'll arrow over and then I will tell it the weights so that was worth 4 this was worth 5 2 and 3 so now when I run one variable stats stat calculate one variable what I do not want to do is just L1 and go down to calculate, which is what we did in an earlier section. But I want to tell it where my frequencies are because that's what my weights are, right? It's a frequency distribution kind of hidden in disguise. So I want to tell it L2 because L2 was where my uh, frequencies, my weights were. So if you look above the number 2 in blue, it says L2. See it? It stands for list 2. So I hit the blue button, the second button, and then I hit number 2, and it tells me L2. So it's saying, hey, my X's are in L1 and my weights are in L2. So when I go down to calculate and press enter, there you have it. 3.321 right there at the top. All right, so I'm going to write that down. Matter of fact, I will pause and write some of that down one second. All right, so I made a table here. And this is actually the same table we'll make in StatCrunch, so it works the same way. I made it a little too long, so I had to put this down here. And so then on the TI-83, if you want to write, or 84, sorry, you would say um, you want to go to stat, then you want to use calc, then you want to choose one variable stat, but the important part is you need to get your freak on, right? Get your frequency list on, which makes it sound more cool than it is. So you want to have, oops, calculate number one, you want to have that frequency list L2, so you want your list to be L1, and you want your freak list, right, your frequency list, to be L2. And for that, you hit second and two. And so then when you run it, X bar would be 3.321, which is the mean. Simple as that, right? So I'm gonna make a little note. Get your freak on. Right? So by having a, something in that frequency list, you are getting your freak on. You're turning your frequency list on. I can't help it. I have to use my, my nerdy math jokes where I can. All right, now what about stat crunch? Well, it should be pretty straightforward, and it is. It's actually very straightforward. So I'll just open stat crunch. And then you have to make the table just like you did in the calculator, but it should be relatively easy. So if I call this X, for example, and then I'll say 4, 3, 2.5, and 3.5, 
and then call these W for the weights. You can call them whatever you want, but four, five, two, three. You could call them grade and credit too. This is grade, this was credit, right? But that's what they are. So then you go to stat, grouped bin data. So I'm going to summary stat right there, summary statistics for grouped data, because we really have sort of a frequency list going on here, right? So grouped bin data, and it says the bins are the grades, right? Those are the X values. The counts, which are the frequencies, were the credits, right? And then I can tell it what I want it to find. I want it to find me the mean. So then I should just be able to click compute. And there it is, 3.321. Simple as that. So I wrote that down on my sheet so you can see. On stat crunch, you hit stat, summary stat, grouped bin data, right? You don't actually hit any of these. These are just the, the menus you choose. And then these are your bins over here. These are your counts over here. So I can call them bins and counts. And away you go. It'll find you the mean, right? So it'll tell you the mean is 3.321. So you can use whichever technology is easier for you or whichever one your instructor wants you to use, etc.